let's start immunity and uh, immune system immunity and immune system moving on the human health and disease part 2 it is the part 1 we are seeing the different kinds of diseases now we are moving to the immune system that uh, location of the immune system you can see on the screen immune system in the different part what you can tell lymphoid system is nothing but a part uh, uh, the main center for the immune system you see here adenoid tonsils lymph nodes which are called as uh, secondary lymphoid organ pale patches is present in the small intestine and uh, the spleen is the main lymphoid organ thymus near to the heart the child gland that we can say that is lymphoid appendix also and red bone marrow is the lymphoid organ so uh, this is a diagram it's showing the, the headquarters of uh, lymphoid lymphoid system uh, which we can see the bone marrow and the spleen and the lymph nodes lymphoid organs are shown and lymphoid tissues are also shown on the screen okay now moving on the system that gives immunity to the body by recognizing responding and remembering foreign antigen it include lymphoid organ tissues cell uh, and soluble molecules like uh, uh, antibody antibody we can say the play role in allergic reaction and autoimmune diseases and organ transplantation immune system is having the various uh, uh, issues we have that only Uh, that we can say the immune system participate again is infection immune system may be become reason for autoimmune reactions uh, allergic responses or that kind of negative responses even because of this particular immune system we can think of. the organs where origin and uh, maturation and proliferation of the lymphocytes occur there are two types primary lymphoid organs and uh, secondary lymphoid organs production and maturation is going to be happen for the lymphocytes in the primary lymphoid organ activation of uh, immune cells like t and b lymphocytes are going to happen in uh, secondary lymphoid organ so let us see the difference here immature lymphocyte differentiate into antigen excuse <coughs> me sensitive lymphocyte we call it as maturation immature become mature then uh, production also occur here that means the bone marrow is responsible for the production of both t and b lymphocytes maturation of the b lymphocytes occur in bone marrow maturation of the t lymphocytes occur in thymus that you have to remember production of t and b lymphocytes occur in bone marrow and uh, maturation of uh, b lymphocytes in bone marrow and maturation of t lymphocytes in thymus so the name b and t based on the maturation thymus is a large during birth but gradually reduce in size and become a very small size in puberty next coming to the secondary lymphoid organ matured lymphocyte migrate to these organs after the maturation for activation they will come here okay the spleen and lymph nodes tonsils pears patches of small intestine and appendix secondary lymphoid organs are the sites for interaction of lymphocytes with antigen which then proliferate to become effector cells okay so that you can see the bone marrow particularly red bone marrow and thymus on the right and left lobes of the thymus near to the heart you can see and uh, the spleen spleen matured lymphocytes uh, migrate to these particular organs we can say spleen and lymph nodes we can see lymph nodes along with that uh, tonsils pharyngeal palatine lingual tonsils and uh, along with that we can see the appendix and uh, the small intestine immune cells which are located in the small intestine we can say the tonsils we can call it as uh, that uh, what do you say them as uh, malt mucosa associated lymphoid tissue also it can be called as mucosa associated lymphoid tissue malt mucosa associated lymphoid tissue in general we call it as uh, malt that means that uh, after the maturation 
these certain organs are going to that mean certain uh, lymphocytes c and b lymphocytes are moving to the different mucosa layer it may be mucosa of trachea it may be mucosa of intestine it may be the mucosa of stomach particularly in the mucosa of uh, intestine small intestine we call it as peyer's patch we have a general name for all of them that is uh, uh, the mucosa associated lymphoid tissue okay do remember peyer's patch is a regular question for us okay so that's it about uh, the secondary lymphoid organs we are seeing and on the screen secondary lymphoid organs like peyer's patches and uh, the small intestine then uh, the peyer's patches that we can say they are present in the small intestine okay so along with that we have seen the spleen lymph nodes moving on to so the spleen spleen is a bean shaped organ you see the location of the spleen location on your left contain lymphocytes and phagocytes removes worn out rbcs and microorganisms from blood it is a reservoir of erythrocytes and we know uh, we call it as the graveyard of rbc even okay likewise let us see the lymph nodes nothing but uh, lymphatic vessels in some certain areas getting bulged over we can say them as a lymph node itself okay they are the small solid structures found in the lymphatic system what do they do they trap the microorganisms or other antigens the trapped antigens activate the lymphocytes and cause the immune response mucosa associated lymphoid tissue we can say simply that uh, t and b lymphocytes after the maturation they go to the uh, different areas of the mucosa layers of the body it may be the lining of respiratory it may be the lining of digestive or urinogenital tract we can say and they constitute about 50% of lymphoid tissue there are so many that means you have to understand and it is a question actually in the previous examination they constitute 50% of lymphoid tissue mucosa associated lymphoid tissue particularly in the small intestine now only we are seeing we call it as peyer's patches but it is a general word we say mal we can see in the respiratory tract digestive tract urinogenital tract and it constitute 50% of the lymphoid tissue do remember 50% mere malt occupies 50% of lymphoid tissue and the overall ability of the immune system to fight the disease causing organism basically immune system we can say based on the fight uh, we can call it as the innate immunity and acquired immunity the fight that uh, that uh, immunity to come by birth we can say innate acquired the immunity developed during the lifetime the okay, innate immunity is a non specific type of defense acquired immunity is a pathogen specific immunity next let's take a look on the innate immunity it provide different barriers to the entry of foreign agents into our body like uh, they include physical barriers like skin physiological barriers like enzyme cellular barriers like macrophage cytokine barriers like interferons they are all going to be barriers we can say so innate immunity with barriers so let's take a look one after another the physical barriers include skin prevent the entry of foreign bodies and the mucus coating of the lining of the respiratory and gastrointestinal and urinogenital tract to trap the micro we can say physical barrier the question will be asked in that manner what it is innate or acquired in the innate what it is physical or physiological or psychological a cellular barrier or cytokine barrier that way also question can be asked over the physiological barriers include acid in the stomach hcl saliva and tear from eyes the, the tear from eyes which contain the enzyme called lysozyme they are all going to be the physiological barrier cellular barriers obviously wbc particularly neutrophils or we can say them as polymorphonuclear leukocytes and monocytes when they become activated they call macrophages and especially natural killer lymphocytes are also going to be uh, one of the uh, cellular barrier we can say activated monocytes we can say macrophages on screen wbc after staining
cytokine barrier their informer slide interferon is going to be inform uh, that particular a protein released from a uh, virally infected cell and goes to the healthy cells and provide the information of the virus virus infected cells secrete protein called interferon which protects non infected cells from further wall viral infection acquired immunity pathogen specific immunity characterized by memory uh, how does the memory will come first when we encounter with the pathogen the low intensity primary response can be seen over but that low intensity primary response gives us memory cell so that's why the second encounter with the same pathogen makes a high intensity secondary response secondary response is also called anamnestic response secondary response is also said to be anamnestic response we missed that word because uh, that is going to be a bigger question for us so let me write uh, we missed that word i think i got uh, some screen problems anamnestic word secondary response or anamnestic response we can say okay so very very important one next so acquired immunity acquired which come after the birth we can say acquired immunity so in the day we have natural active acquired immunity that means when we encounter the pathogen for the first time naturally we can say it has natural active acquired immunity so our vaccination will come under artificial active acquired immunity why because we introduce the pathogens uh, into the body that artificial so at the time we get the memory cells no matter we call vaccination as artificial active acquired immunity moving on the primary and secondary immune responses are out carried out with two types of lymphocytes t and b lymphocytes acquired memory will come with these two types of cells only t lymphocytes help b cells to produce antibodies in what way particularly t helper cells we can say and the b lymphocyte produce antibodies which fight with the pathogen so helper t cell you can see there that uh, when they exposed to the microbe they become activated helper t cell activated helper t t cell is going to provide the information either to the t cytotoxic cell or either to the b lymphocyte and we have one more type of t cell that is t cytotoxic cell when it is activated they are going to kill the pathogen themselves we call it as cell mediated immunity so let's take a look on this the b cell finds an antigen which matches with its receptor we are having a uh, that example demo here how do we kill so the b cell finds an antigen which matches with its receptor you see here b cell receptors are there when they find the antigen one of them one of the particular modal antibodies they have on the surface they match okay next after that it waits until it is activated by helper t cell after that t helper cell should activate the b cell then the b cell divides to produce the plasma and memory cell okay and these plasma cells produce large number of antibodies which are going to kill the bacteria plasma cell produce antibodies that attain the that attain the current type of invader and uh, then after uh, uh the, the particular uh, macrophage will come and remove the total antigen and uh, antibody complex that one looks delicious who is saying macrophages are saying and these memory cells i remember this one red alert when it comes back again it will happen so if this pathogen they roam they are coming inside we call it as natural active acquired immunity if the pathogen is we are introducing artificially to get the memory cells we say artificial active acquired immunity that difference we have to know the antibody the very important one antibody which are produced by the b lymphocytes after the activation the differentiate into plasma cell and memory cell they produce antibody that each antibody has four polypeptide chains you can see our two are blue and two are green i'm not saying the color here for your understanding i'm saying okay the four polypeptide two small and two heavy chain that two heavy chains and two light chain okay the different types of antibodies we have in general we call antibodies as immunoglobulins 
Then we have IgG, IgA, IgM, IgD, and IgE. We have five types of antibodies. Okay, so on the screen, you can see the five types of antibodies. IgA is a dimeric one. IgE is a monomeric one. And IgD, you can see their pentameric IgM. So these are monomeric, D, E, G, E, D, G, you remember like that. And A is dimeric, two antibodies that I see right there. They're FCN. And IgM is a pentameric, the bigger one that is. Just for information. So acquired immune response, as we said now, that uh, natural active acquired immune response or artificial active acquired, whatever it may be, that it is of two types, humoral or antibody mediated response, we can say, and cell mediated response. In case of humoral or antibody mediated response, antibodies are found in the blood plasma. So that's why it is called humoral immune response. In case of cell mediated immunity, the T lymphocytes mediate the cell mediated immunity. T lymphocytes mediate the cell mediated immunity, and cell mediated immunity causes graft rejection. Graft rejection done by T lymphocytes. That means when you when the, when other person organ is introduced into our body, like kidney donation or some, or some other like that. So in that case, the, that our that particular foreign organ. Definitely there is a foreign organ, it's not ours. We reject that, that we say graft rejection. So graft rejection is uh, going to be done by T lymphocytes. That is very important to be remembered. The body is able to differentiate uh, the self and the non-self. So tissue matching and blood group matching are essential before undertaking any graft or transplant. And the patient has to take the immune suppressants of, of uh, Whole life he has to take over. Tested immune suppressants in the case of graft or organ transplantation, they have to take the whole life. And acquired immunity, active, passive, active, natural active acquired immunity, artificial active acquired immunity, and passive is of two types again natural passive acquired immunity, artificial passive acquired immunity. As uh, we have seen it now, like. Uh, that in general, immune response occurs naturally. Microbe entered in the body, our B lymphocytes are activated, our T lymphocytes are activated, and they remember that by microbe, and uh, that what you produce, we produce the memory cell. We can say that is natural active acquired immunity during the natural infection by microbes. So here antibodies are produced in host body in response to antigen. So living are dead microbes or other proteins. It is a slow process and it is produced by two ways, natural, active, artificial, active. What is artificial active? Injecting the microbe deliberately during immunization. Simply we call vaccination. Passive immunity. Simply we can say in those cases our immune system is not at all working. Not at all working. We can say it as a passive immunity. It is again two types, natural, passive. Immunity, artificial passive. In this case, our, our immune system is not working. That's why we are taking antibodies from outside. Antibodies IgG from mother through the placenta into the fetus. Antibodies IgA are present in the colostrum uh, that infant. Artificial passive immunity, we have a best example, anti-tetanus serum. Immunization, based on the memory of the immune system, the two types, immunization is of two types, active immunization, now it's a burning problem, vaccination, people are waiting for corona vaccine. The preparation of vaccine, antigenic proteins of pathogen are inactivated, pathogen is introduced into the body. That means we are injecting the virus into the body, viral protein or viral pathogen, that, that means whole virus or viral spikes of the protein, whatever, we introduce into our body for what? To make it activate, the antibodies produce again as these antigens neutralize the pathogenic agents during actual infection. That means simply we say, we, we produce memory cells again as them. The vaccines also generate memory B and T cells that recognize the pathogen quickly. We have polio vaccine, we have hepatitis B vaccine, DPT vaccines likewise. Vaccines are produced using 
DNA recombinant DNA technology. It is a modern technology. In that way, we are able to produce the hepatitis B vaccine. It is produced from this particular recombinant DNA technology, which is going to be uh, uh, formed in the yeast, colonizing, uh, culture, the, culturing the yeast, we produce the hepatitis B vaccine. Passive immunization, direct injection of the preformed antibodies. Do you remember? Preformed antibodies are antitoxin when quick immune response is required. That means immunization against tetanus, snake, venom. In that cases, we are not taking uh, antigens. We are taking preformed antibodies. So allergy, exaggerated immune response of the immune system to the certain antigens present in the environment. We can say allergy. Allergens are the substances causing the immune response. Like we have so many allergic tissues, are there mites in there, pollen, animal, dander, we can say. So itching reactions can be expected over. Asthma is also one of the response. Antibodies produced in the response to the allergens are IgE type. In normal people, IgA present. But in allergic people, they are showing allergy against the pollen, dander or anything. Energetic response is there means these antibodies are IgE type. Squeezing, watery eyes, running nose, difficulty in breathing, all these are going to be the symptoms for that particular allergic response. Allergy is due to the release of chemicals like histamine and serotonin and from mast cells. Mast cells containing IgE antibodies are going to produce this. You see here, a mast cell having IgE antibodies in the surface and overactive hyperactive, it is going to be and it uh, stimulate our immune cells to produce more number of antibodies to destroy our cells. That's why in case of allergic responses, uh, uh, we can see here any medicine you take, on medicine you can see the chemical is going to be antihistamine. Antihistamine, why? Because mast cells are releasing more histamine and they are stimulating our poly to do destruction of our own body. So that's why that histamine uh, is working that's why we produce antihistamine. So determine the cause of allergy, the patient is exposed in some cases. That means uh, uh, for a medicine or for a particular vaccine or for a particular injection, they give little doses first of all, whether they are showing allergic response or not. Then after only, they'll take the action. The doctor we are talking. So drugs like antihistamine, adrenaline, steroids quickly reduce the symptoms of allergy. Modern day life cycle, lifestyle results the lowering of immunity and more sensitivity to allergy. Asthma, respiratory disease due to allergy. Autoimmunity, also one of the bigger uh, question and examination point of view due to the genetic or other unknown reason, body attack our own cell, cell the cell cell we call autoimmune disease. We have a best example that is rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is going to be an autoimmune disorder. So, very small area immune system, but uh, promisingly we are getting question in him uh, this particular area. And all the questions are based on NCRT text only, like graft rejection, like uh, example for autoimmune disorder, like uh, medicine for allergic responses, that very, very uh, small area. That's why we can say every sentence already came in examination. You can't say like this line came, this line came. Every line is already in examination. That means like preformed antibodies, if you take what kind of immunity that is. Likewise, in that way, payers patches are belongs to. These are the different kinds of questions we are expecting here. So that's why requesting you to read immunology again and again uh, that makes that particular point, which can come as a question. That's enough. We don't increase 15 to 20 points. It will be over. Where the possibility of the questioning. So that's why make your own notes and continue reading the immunology.